In today's video, we're diving into one of the most formidable warships ever built by South Korea, the 2026 KDX-3 Batch 2 Aegis Destroyer. This next-generation vessel is not just an evolution of naval power, but a clear statement of South Korea's growing technological and strategic capabilities in the Asia-Pacific region. Let's explore why the KDX-3 Batch 2 stands out in modern naval warfare. At first glance, the sleek, low-observable design of the destroyer showcases its focus on radar cross-section reduction. The ship incorporates a refined hull form with reduced angles and a redesigned superstructure for enhanced stealth. Although large, displacing around 10,500 tons full load, it retains a streamlined appearance, built for both agility and survivability in hostile environments. One of the standout features of this destroyer is its advanced Aegis combat system, specifically the Baseline 9. C2 configuration, which integrates ballistic missile defense and anti-air capabilities. Powered by Lockheed Martin's SPY-1DB radar and South Korea's indigenous improvements, this system can track hundreds of targets simultaneously, whether they're aircraft, drones, or ballistic missiles. Combined with the powerful AN-SPY-6 radar suite expected in some configurations, the destroyer offers a comprehensive view of the battlespace. Under the hood, the ship is powered by a combined gas and gas COGAG, propulsion system using LM-2500 gas turbines. This setup gives it a top speed of over 30 knots, making it fast enough to escort carrier groups or respond rapidly to emerging threats. Despite its size, the destroyer is surprisingly maneuverable and capable of long-range missions across oceans. Armament is where the KDX-3 Batch 2 truly flexes its muscles. The vessel is equipped with a 128-cell vertical launch system, VLS, split between American MK-41 launchers and Korean KVLS cells. These can fire a mix of standard missiles, SM-2, SM-6K SOMs, Korean surface-to-air missiles, anti-submarine rockets, and the highly anticipated HYUNM-004 cruise missile. This means it can handle everything from aerial threats to land attack and anti-submarine warfare with equal precision. In addition to its missile systems, the destroyer features a 127mm naval gun for surface bombardment, phalanx CIWS and RAM launchers for close in defense, torpedo tubes for subsurface threats, and hangar facilities capable of supporting two helicopters, usually the A-159 or similar anti-submarine platforms. These choppers give the ship extended reach in submarine hunting and reconnaissance operations. Inside, the vessel is built for 300-plus crew members and supports advanced automation for reduced manpower requirements. Digital displays, integrated command centers, and AI-supported threat detection allow commanders to make faster, smarter decisions under pressure. Every system on board is designed for network-centric warfare, meaning it can share data with other ships, planes, and command posts in real time. Perhaps the most impressive thing about the KDX-3 Batch 2 is its ability to operate independently or as a flagship. With its broad sensor range, deep weapon suite, and multi-role capability, it can lead a task force or slip into international coalitions like RIMPAC with ease. What sets this destroyer apart isn't just the hardware. It's the hybrid of global technology with South Korea's own growing defense ecosystem, proof that Seoul is not just a buyer but a builder of cutting-edge military assets. To wrap it up, the 2026 KDX-3 Batch 2 Aegis Destroyer is more than just a ship, it's a floating fortress, a symbol of deterrence, and a sign that South Korea is playing in the top tier of naval power projection. Whether you're a defense enthusiast or just curious about military innovation, this ship is a remarkable example of what 21st century warships are becoming. Absolutely, let's go deeper into the explanation of the 2026 KDX-3 Batch 2 Aegis Destroyer, one of the most advanced and powerful warships in Asia, and a major leap in South Korea's naval capability. The KDX-3 Batch 2 destroyer is part of South Korea's ambitious plan to build a blue water navy, that means a navy capable of operating across open oceans, not just defending its coastline. This destroyer is the upgraded version of the original Soyoung the Great Class, Batch I, which were already among the most heavily armed destroyers in the world. With Batch 2, South Korea has focused on improved stealth, more advanced electronics, greater firepower, and stronger anti-missile defense. Let's begin with the design and stealth features. From the outside, the ship may look similar to its predecessor, but look closely, it features improved stealth shaping. The hull has smoother lines, fewer exposed angles, and cleaner surfaces. 
the superstructure is designed with radar absorbing materials and shapes that scatter enemy radar signals, making the ship much harder to detect. Even the mast and antennas have been optimized for stealth. These changes reduce the radar cross section significantly, which is a big deal for survivability in modern combat where radar detection equals vulnerability. Now let's talk about radar and sensors, the heart of this destroyer's combat capability. It features the Aegis Combat System Baseline 9, one of the most sophisticated naval combat systems in the world. This system is what gives the destroyer the ability to simultaneously track and engage air, surface, and ballistic missile threats. It can guide multiple interceptors in flight at once, coordinate with other ships and aircraft, and respond to incoming threats in seconds. An upgrade in Batch 2 is the integration of Korean-built systems, including a domestic combat management system and sensors designed to work alongside the Aegis system. This makes the ship more independent from US technology while keeping interoperability. Also, it's expected to eventually integrate the SPY-6 radar or an equivalent AESA radar with even higher resolution and range, capable of detecting stealth aircraft and hypersonic missiles. Next, we move to propulsion and mobility. The destroyer uses four LM2500 gas turbines, arranged in a Kagag combined gas and gas configuration. These turbines give it a top speed of over 30 knots, that's about 56 kilometers per hour, which is fast for a ship this size. More importantly, the ship has a long operational range, allowing it to deploy across the Pacific or Indian Ocean without frequent refueling. The propulsion system is also designed to be quieter, an important feature for anti-submarine operations. Speaking of which, anti-submarine warfare ASW, is a big part of this destroyer's role. It comes with advanced sonar systems, both hull-mounted and towed array, to detect enemy submarines at long distances. It also carries lightweight torpedoes and supports up to two helicopters, typically the AW-159 Wildcat, fitted with dipping sonar, radar, and torpedoes. These helicopters dramatically increase the ship's